In 10 minutes, one can't say a lot about a region as big and diverse as Latin America. And so what I'm going to do instead, uh, if I know how to use this machine, is uh, talk to you, mention three main points. Uh, under the general pessimistic uh, title of irrational exuberance gives away. And I titled it this because two months ago, two and a half months ago, everyone was saying, oh, don't worry. We're doing great. Commodity prices are fine. We don't worry about the U.S. market tanking. Well, uh, reality has set in. So three main points uh, to present. First, past performance is not an indicator of future prospects. You hear that all the time from mutual funds, but it is true elsewhere in life as well. Second point, there will be a great challenge in Latin America, but a great opportunity as well in its relations with East Asia, especially China, if Latin American countries are prepared to take advantage of the opportunities, in which case they are not necessarily in that position. And third, there is a need for more investment in physical infrastructure and human capital and administrative reform. And that's probably the area where Latin America falls short. So first, past performance. Uh, it's been very good. Uh, and that's the cause of the irrational exuberance, I think. Uh, because of the commodity boom, because of the solid macroeconomic performance of the last decade or more, the success of the much abused and much and often misunderstood, including today, Washington consensus. And I can talk about that later. But the Washington consensus essentially was trying to establish a solid foundation for economic growth. It was not the prescription for economic growth. And, but you could not have it without uh, a, a, a better handle on macroeconomic policy, and that's what was the, con the consensus was all about. First, you have to get the basics right, but that is only a first step, not the solution to the uh, uh, development uh, strategies for Latin America or for other countries, as, as it were. And indeed, Latin America did do a good job. Growth was uh, very uh, uh, robust. Uh, but it has diminished quite a bit. And if you look at the projections going forward, there has been a sharp downturn, particularly for Brazil and Mexico. Mexico is going to have zero growth over the next year. Brazil's growth has dropped down dramatically. Uh, these numbers going forward are actually, you have to ratchet them down as all of the projections have been rat ratcheted down for growth in the United States and, and Europe. Uh, there has been a significant improvement in uh, the levels of poverty in these countries, which are quite significant. This is very important given the large income disparities, uh, which pose a big challenge for both social and political stability going forward. And, and there are a number of countries in Latin America where this is a big constraint on economic growth. Uh, there has been great improvement on inflation, uh, great improvement on the management of external debt, but inflation is probably most important because that is the biggest tax on the poor and exacerbates the problem of income inequality. So that side of the picture has been, uh, has been rather good uh, until the markets tanked in the industrial countries. Uh, and that has exposed a major problem in, uh, in Latin America, and that relates to the fact that Latin Americans don't save very much. Uh, and as a consequence, they don't invest very much. Uh, and that has put the, often put them well behind in global competition. And it makes it much more important for them to attract foreign investment, both be, for, to finance their development, to uh, import technologies and management skills. But there's a global competition for that investment. And I like to relate that to as a global beauty contest. Latin America has many beautiful women, but it doesn't do very well in the beauty contest for foreign investment. And uh, that is particularly uh, uh, difficult now as it competes more aggressively with East Asia and China. 
And uh, that is a source of, 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 of big concern for Latin America going forward. Uh, and uh, it, it is the big challenge that Latin American countries have going forward, both in terms of attracting investment and also competing with East Asia for uh, export markets. Uh, part of the problem has recently been, at least in the short term, improved by changes in the exchange rate. Uh, Mexico went through the ringer when, uh, uh, when the Mexican peso appreciated against the renminbi, but more recently there has been a turn, and in the last few months a huge turn as the renminbi has appreciated against the dollar and the peso and the real and other, other Latin American currencies have depreciated substantially against the dollar. So there's been a huge uh, a shift in competitiveness, uh, part of the unwinding uh, of the global imbalances, but also one that comes as a bit of a, a shock and will knock up inflation in, in, in those countries. Uh, another aspect of the response, though, needs to be engagement. And uh, there has been a growing uh, understanding in Latin America that countries need to engage, particularly across the Asia-Pacific, uh, negotiating new trade agreements, investment treaties, and the like. Uh, and, and this is likely to expand going forward. Uh, it's important, uh, first and foremost, to encourage competition in Latin American countries. Uh, that, that, it, that is critical, uh, given, given the nature of Latin American economic development. But it's also important to establish commercial relations, to share technologies and services in some areas where Latin America can actually have a, a profitable uh, uh, two-way trade with uh, China, Korea, and other countries in East Asia. Uh, uh, this is going to be a key factor of the external economic policy of Latin America going forward. I think it uh, uh, is one area of potential optimism for Latin America, getting the external impetus uh, to boost domestic reform uh, in, uh, in their own countries. And that's the third, uh, third area of discussion. Latin Americas face a serious need for improvement of infrastructure, education, administrative efficiency. And this shows up in a number of areas. Uh, overall competitiveness, if you look at what the World Economic Forum has done, uh, Latin American countries don't rate very high, except for Chile, overall vis-a-vis -vis other countries in uh, China, Korea, other countries in, in, in Asia. Uh, if you look at the World Bank's doing business indicators, uh, the differences are, are even starker because uh, here a, uh, a higher rank uh, uh, is, 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 is worse performance and uh, you can see a big, gig, big gap between Latin American countries and their competitors in, in East Asia. Uh, and uh, this, this is something that addresses the fundamental problems of doing business in these, in these countries. Uh, uh, the, uh, uh, there is a need to, uh, to uh, deal with the uh, rule of law concerns, the security concerns, the regulatory uh, policies that actually increase the transaction cost of doing business, uh, to establishing businesses, to hiring workers, and, and indeed when you consider uh, the policies for hiring workers, you have to consider the ability to fire workers. Because if you can't let workers go, there's going to be a great constraint on, uh, on, on hiring. And we discussed that in the first panel. But subsidizing uh, employment doesn't work or is not going to be effective unless the firms can have some flexible uh, management of their workforce afterwards, including uh, uh, reductions in workforce uh, when needed or changes and uh, labor rigidities can undo all the benefits of, of, of employment subsidies that we were talking about before. These are all key problems uh, for Latin American countries, huge red tape regulatory barriers to doing business. This comes up in, in, in almost every area of the assessments of, of the World Bank, except perhaps in, in, in protecting investors. Where, uh, where Korea and China have not had the, uh, the best uh, uh, 
experience and where Mexico and Brazil do, do relatively better. But in all of the other areas of the uh, World Bank's indicators, almost across the board, it is more difficult to do business or establish businesses in Latin America, and that's going to make it more costly going forward to, to maintain competition uh, with, with East Asian countries and to attract the investment needed to finance their economic development. Uh, so the, uh, the last, last point I'd like to make is one on, on education. Uh, I was uh, at a meeting about a uh, week and a half ago and, uh, of the Trilateral Commission, and we were discussing future prospects in North America. And when it came the time for the, uh, one of the prominent central bankers in the region to talk about Mexico, his comment was, we have to do something to support education in Mexico. Because if we're talking about medium and long-term growth prospects, the only way to spur innovation in these societies is to increase the level of education. And if you look at the education indicators, there are a number of Latin American countries that spend a lot of money on education, uh, but they don't spend it well. And that, uh, it's not the level of funds, but the performance that you get out of that, that, uh, those investments. And in Latin America, a lot of the investments in education are wasted. Uh, and they're not going into investments in technology to improve the use of technology uh, as, as people develop their skills over time. That, I think, is an important area under underappreciated that will be crucial for the development of the Latin American economies and crucial for the continuing uh, uh, advancement of Latin America uh, uh, and, uh, and uh, in, in the financial system as, as we've been talking about this morning. So I think I've used up all my time. I haven't talked about most of the countries, but we'll have hopefully ample time for discussion during the panel. Thank you very much. Thank you.